watching God's Word for You Today program, an online Bible teaching ministry of Maranatha Baptist Church, Villamonte, Bacolod City, Philippines. This program is designed to make the time-tested, solid Word of God relevant to your life's need today. God's Word for You Today is found in Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. Isaiah 42 is one of the famous servant songs in the book of Isaiah. In this particular song, Yahweh, the God of Israel, showed that he would raise up another servant who would establish justice and righteousness on the earth. This servant of Jehovah here definitely is not Cyrus the Great of Persia, nor the nation of Israel. He is unique and individual who will accomplish for Jehovah what Israel failed to do concerning the nations of the earth. This servant of Jehovah is no other than the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Matthew in his gospel actually quoted the first four verses here as a messianic prophecy which finds its fulfillment in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this passage, the Lord Jesus describes himself as the servant everyone should behold, should set focus upon, or should give attention to. The Lord, Yahweh, commands all peoples to put their focus on Jesus, the Messiah, not on their idols or false gods. Verse 1 says, Look, behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. What do we see when we behold Jesus, the Lord's servant? We see six things about Jesus in verse 1 alone. Number one, he is the Lord's servant, the greatest servant of Jehovah, far greater than Israel and Cyrus the Great. Number two, he is upheld or gripped firmly by the Lord. That means that there is no reason for him to fail. He will surely do what Israel had failed to do. Number three, he is the elect one, the anointed one. Number four, he is the one whom the Lord delighted wholeheartedly, not just one he would use. Number five, the Lord would place his spirit upon him, blessing him with his presence and empowering him for service. And number six, he will bring forth justice to the nations of the world. He will establish societal order and legal equity to the nations. These gentle nations mentioned are incapable of finding justice on their own. But the servant of the, of the Lord, the Messiah, will be the one to bring that justice to them. In other words, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, would not only be restricted to the Jewish people. It extended to the peoples of the world, the Gentile nations. Bringing justice and righteousness to the nations will surely come to pass. And it will surely come true at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But how will the servant of the Lord bring justice to the nations? First, the servant, the Messiah, will do it in a quiet and peaceful way. He will not seek attraction to himself by smashing people or by killing people or by destroying others. He will not use aggressive 
and threatening means just to bring about peace in the world. It will not be through violent or destructive means. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. The servant of Jehovah would not be a self-promoter. He would not advertise himself. His ministry would be so quiet. He would not act like an oppressive, demanding king. He would not act in selfishness, nor attempt to elevate himself. He would not exert his power like other rulers. He will be marked by humility. What we see here is a perfectly typical servant with a one-of-a-kind heart for service to the Lord. And this prophecy by Isaiah was perfectly fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. He perfectly exemplified true servanthood. And this is the kind of attitude, the servant's attitude, that should be seen reproduced in all who claim to be the followers of the Lord Jesus. Secondly, he will bring justice and righteousness to the nations in a gentle way. He would not destroy the weak and reject those who are oppressed. The servant of the Lord would care for them. The weak uh, people are compared to a bruised reed. A bruised reed shall he not break, he shall not break off. And the smoking flax, the dimly burning wick, shall he not quench. A reed is a fairly fragile plant. Yet if a reed is bruised, the servant will handle it so gently that he will not break it. And a flax used for kindling a lamp to start a fire does not flame but only smokes. He will not quench it into extinguishing. Instead, the servant of the Lord would gently blow on the smoking flax, fanning it into flame again, reviving it again. What does that mean? It means that the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the servant of Jehovah, deals with these weak people gently, tenderly, helping them to become strong. He fans into flame his smoldering people, supplying them cure, the care that they need, and giving them energy. The Lord Jesus sees value in his people who are lowly, those who are hurting, those who are broken. Matthew chapter 12, 18 to 20 records his prophecy in Isaiah as fulfilled in Jesus as he showed compassion in the crowd and healed them in their diseases. Jesus, a heart for the weak and for the suffering. And thirdly, the Messiah, the servant of Jehovah, would faithfully fulfill or accomplish his mission. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law, for his teaching, for his, for his instruction. Nothing could stop him. No obstacle could stop him from being faithful to his task. His work will surely be done. He will, he will always fulfill what he has started. All peoples will wait for his instructions and hope for the establishment of his kingdom here on earth. My friend, remember this. The hope of the world is in Jesus, the true Messiah. My question is, are you weak? Are you suffering? Are you in need of revival? Are you being oppressed or in bondage of sin? The Lord Jesus Christ is calling on you now. Come to Him and be saved, be healed, be revived, and be useful again. That is God's Word for you today.